Honor members, as you may be aware, on the evening of Friday, July the 26th, 2019, with great grief and sorrow, we received the sad news of the demise of the member for Kibra constituency, the, the late Honorable Ken Okoth, MP, who passed away while undergoing treatment at the Nairobi Hospital. The late Honorable Ken Okoth made his debut in national politics in March 2013 when he vied for and successfully clinched the Kibra constituency seats. His servant leadership quickly earned him the adoration of his constituents who re-elected him in the August 2017 general elections to serve for a second term, a position he held until his passing on last Friday. The late Honorable Ken Okoth, an alumni of Sarah Boy Center, St. Lawrence University, Canton, New York, at Georgetown University, Washington, DC, was a uniquely gifted and brilliant leader. Immediately upon being sworn in, as a first-time member of parliament in the 11th parliament, he took up his parliamentary roles with, with a lot of enthusiasm. Those who served alongside him in the 11th parliament will agree that his swift mastery of the grasp and grasp of the parliamentary business ensured that his insightful and tremendously enriching contributions were keenly followed by all, particularly his contributions on legislations and matters relating to the education and human rights sectors. Honorable members, the late Honorable Ken Okoth spoke with exceptional articulation. Without a doubt, he was a firm leader who never shied away from defending the rights of his constituents and the people of Kenya in general. In Parliament, he championed for three issues, among many others, and would always quote them, Uchumi Bora, Elimu Kwanza na Mazingira Bora. He was also instrumental in the passage of two, two key pieces of legislation, namely the Prevention of Torture Act 2017 and the National Corona Service Act 2017. Honor members, as vibrant member, as vibrant member of the August House, the late Honorable Ken Okoth served actively and diligently both in the House and in its committees. In the 11th Parliament between 2013 and 2017, he was a resourceful member of the Departmental Committee on Education, Research, and Technology, where his contributions and participation were commendable. In this 12th Parliament, he diligently served as a member of the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee and the Procedure and House Rules Committee. He will also be remembered as, a one, as one of the founders and chairperson of the Parliamentary Caucus on the SDGs. Many of us who interacted and worked with him will acknowledge that he was a resolute, humble, gentle, pleasant, and amicable personality, and we will all miss him. Indeed, his passing on marks a dark moment not only for his family, the 12th Parliament, and the residents of Kibra constituency, but for the entire country at large. Kenya has indeed lost a candid legislator, hardworking leader, and a true son of the country who endeavored to give everything for what he believed in with great courage, tenacity, and humility. He leaves behind an outstanding track record in the management of the national government constituencies development fund where his constituency was highly rated in the management of the constituency development fund. Honor members, to accord the fallen gallant leader a decent send-off, I have appointed the following members to an ad hoc committee to liaise with the family in the funeral arrangements. One, the Honorable John Mbandi, EGH MP chairperson, to the Honorable Dr. James Nikal, MP. Three, the Honorable Tom J. Kajuang, MP. Four, the Honorable Yusuf Hassan, MP. Five, the Honorable Tim Wanyonyi, MP. Six, the Honorable Simba Arati, MP. Seven, the Honorable Esther Pasares, MP. And eight, the Honorable Nixon Correll, MP. 
I've also requested the Speaker of the Senate to nominate two senators to join this team. Secondly, honorable members, it is also with a heavy heart that I convey to this House the heartbreaking loss of one of our former members and Deputy Speaker of this House, the late Dr. Honorable Joyce Laboso, PGH, who passed on yesterday, Monday, July 29th, 2019, while undergoing treatment at the Nairobi Hospital. The late Dr. Loboso was a distinguished scholar who obtained a master's in teaching of English as a foreign language from the University of Reading in the United Kingdom and a PhD in gender and language education at the University of Hull, United Kingdom. Without doubt, our academic and professional exploits have been matched by very few and a source of motivation for, for women across the continent. On our members, the late Honorable Joyce Laboso began a remarkable career as a teacher at Kipsigis Girls High School before joining Edgerton University as a lecturer and later rising to Assistant Dean of Studies and coordinator of various programs at the university. She joined Parliament in September 2008 following the passing on of the then member of Fosotik, Honorable Lona Laboso, her sister. Her parliamentary career was decorated with historical milestones. In, a, in her maiden term, she was appointed to the House Business Committee and further served in the Departmental Committee on Education, Research, and Technology. It's worth noting that the late Honorable Laboso made history by becoming the first woman deputy speaker of a House of Parliament in Kenya, as well as the first to hold such a position in the National Assembly under the new constitution. On our members, the leadership of Dr. Laboso spanned across the continent. She was elected co-president of the Africa, African, Caribbean, Pacific, and European Union Joint Parliamentary Assembly, and ably spearheaded the leadership of parliaments representing nearly 150 countries from four regions of the world in championing a parliamentary dimension in the ACP-EU partnerships. It is on, the, on this pedestal of our exemplary leadership that the people of Bomet County elected her in August 2017 as the governor for Bomet, for Bomet, hence making history as one of the three female governors in the, in the male-dominated election elective position of governor. In a passing on, the country and indeed international community has lost a precious jewel, a distinguished scholar, a courageous leader, and a good-hearted and jovial person. The late Honorable Joyce Labo Cherono Laboso Abonio has left a remarkable legacy whose, whose impact has benefited multitudes of people and whose accolades continue to serve as an inspiration to many girls and women across the country and beyond. Honorable members, on behalf of the members of the National Assembly and the Parliamentary Service Commission, and indeed on my own behalf, I wish to take this opportunity to condole with the families of our late brother, the Honorable Ken Okoth, and that of the Honorable Dr. Joyce Cherono Laboso Abonio for the great loss. As the National Assembly, we assure the families of our support during this period of great sorrow and grief. In tribute to our departed colleagues, I request that we observe a minute of silence on our members. Thank you. May their souls rest in eternal peace. On a leader of the majority party. Mr. Speaker, let me take uh, this opportunity on behalf of the people of Garissa Township, myself and my family, to sincerely send my condolences to the uh, my former colleagues, 
Honorable Ken Okoth, Governor Laboso, the people of Kibra, uh, the people of uh, County of Bomet, following the passing on of our two great colleagues and friends. The Speaker Honorable Okoth will be remembered for a very uh, good performance at his constituency and his legislative role in this House. He was a man of few words, very dedicated to the House, made sure that he participate in particular legislation, whether it's a bill or a motion, that of, of, of great interest to him. And I remember when we were passing the torture bill, uh, then in the 11th Parliament, at the committee of the whole House, we were not many. But uh, he was one person as a private member's bill. He could accommodate the concerns of all stakeholders, including the amendments from government. So really want to uh, ask the people of Kibra that uh, at this very trying moment, we condole with you, we will stand with you. And Mr. Speaker, as the tradition has been in this house, that when one of us leaves, myself and the leader of minority rights to the clerk, so that each and every one of us pays 10,000 shilling towards the funeral expenses of our departed colleague. We did that many times. So colleagues, that statement, uh, that statement are making and the Hansard uh, is what the clerk will use to deduct uh, uh, the 10,000, it is a practice, and we will ask our colleagues in the Senate also to do likewise. Mr. Speaker, I think we are at a very trying moment. We only discuss, you know, this disease called cancer when we lose great leaders. And we don't discuss this disease when millions and thousands of Kenyans die in our home states, uh, die in our villages, and in our constituencies. The speaker, I am a living example who lost his sister uh, because of cancer. So I know what it means uh, to lose one, dear one, a sister, or a brother, or a parent, or a son, or a daughter. Speaker, I am sure all of us sitting here in one way or the other, we have lost a relative, a constituent, because of this. And I think as a house that represents the interests of the people of Kenya, we cannot bury our head in the sand anymore. We must make deliberate legislative measures. We must make deliberate uh, budgetary allocations in order to fight this one killer disease that is wiping out the people of Kenya. So Speaker, we must learn, and there are even members of, our, uh, members of this house who have gone through this same disease. We have members who have lost their loved ones. We have members who have lost their constituents. I think, Mr. Speaker, it's high time that this house is in charge of the budget of this country. This House is in charge of making the necessary legislation. We must not bury our head in the sun. We must face it. And Mr. Speaker, we must uh, the, he, he deal with this matter. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Loboso, for those who don't know, came to Parliament through a by-election after the loss of our sister, those of us who were in the 10th Parliament, Honorable Bandi, Honorable Washiali and many others. Her great sister, Lona, passed on in a plane crash with our former elder and minister for roads, then Kipkali Akonis. That by election is how uh, Dr. Joyce Laboso came to parliament. So we know Dr. Joyce Laboso. We were together with her in the 11th parliament. She was one of the most dedicated deputy speaker. I'm not saying Honorable Cheboy is not. I'm not saying, but uh, uh, when we reach there, one day we will talk about his uh, performance. 
but is also one of the dedicated uh, deputy speakers. But she was the first woman male deputy, uh, female deputy speaker, first uh, female deputy speaker in the history of Kenya. She also became one of the very few, the three first female governors in the history of Kenya. I really want to uh, ask uh, her family. In this very trying moment, Dr. Edwin, her two sons, her sisters, the people of Bomet, in this trying moment, may the Almighty Allah give you comfort and that we will miss and we will uh, celebrate your leadership. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, let me also join my colleagues and uh, the leader of majority in sending my heartfelt condolences to the two, the, the, the immediate former member for Kibra and also the former deputy speaker whose office I took after she exited and became a governor. I want to say the two were my personal friends. Honorable Ken Okoth, a very polished politician with some of the best English in this house, in the last parliament, and this one was a good man and a very hardworking member of parliament. The Honorable Dr. Joyce Laboso, who occupied the office I occupy now, immediately before me, was also a personal friend who I got to know her immediately she was elected, and I had lost a seat myself, and therefore I had set up shop as a conveyancing lawyer uh, somewhere in town, corner house, and immediately she was elected. She gave me a job when I needed it most, and I transacted her mortgage uh, facility. I transacted it. So I can say she's one person whom we have supported each other in different ways. She's also a person who together yourself, with yourself, trained me into you know, getting to know some of these things that somebody does when they become a deputy speaker, and particularly the committee of the whole house. So I want to take this opportunity to send my condolences on my own behalf, on behalf of my family, and the members of Kuresoi constituency, Kuresoi North constituency, whom I represent in this house. I also want to join uh, the leader of majority in saying this, that it's a high time as a house we up our game against cancer. We are suffering as a nation. We really need to get into details, not only that we need to, uh, to, to, to legislate and uh, place budget, but we also want to know what is it that we are doing wrong. Because as a country, this is something that has really a side. Now we have a lot of cases of cancer. Every member of this house, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would tell you, has in one way or another been affected by the scourge of cancer. I personally lost my own grandmother. I have lost uh, many, many constituents to this scourge. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I think it's about time we should start thinking or even setting up a hospital specifically to deal with cancer. Members of parliament and other better off people can go to countries outside of Kenya, but our own constituents cannot. Our own constituents cannot afford even a ticket to a country like India, it's expensive. I think it's about time that we set up a hospital and we want to encourage the president, His Excellency the President, uh, Honorable Uhuru, to consider among his um, agenda four items, which one of them which he holds very dear is health. That other than the universal health, we should also consider setting up a cancer hospital in Kenya. That would be a legacy that will not be rivaled by anyone because it is what Kenyans want more than anything else as we speak. Because sending members, many of these members have been conducting a lot of fundraisings to help their constituents and relatives to go abroad. I think if we had a facility and we set it up here, 
and we put all the required um, facilities in that particular hospital, it will go a long way in helping uh, uh, our, our constituents. On Honorable Dr. Laboso, lastly, I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that whereas everybody would say he was, you know, he earned, she earned accolades as the first deputy speaker, as a member who did very well here, there is something that we sometimes forget and which I was happy you mentioned, Mr. Speaker. Internationally, her name has been engraved, particularly in ACPEU, where she was a very active member. Mr. Speaker, when you sent me in the delegation uh, that took over from her, when I arrived there, the first thing they asked me is why did Honorable Laboso uh, quit Parliament to go to Governor? Because they really valued her contributions in ACPEU. So I am sure, the, as, we as we mourn the loss of Honorable Laboso here, even internationally, particularly the members of African, Caribbean, and Economic and, and European Union, they are also mourning with us. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable John Bandy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity also to uh, join my colleagues, the leader of majority. Sorry, Honorable John Bandy, for, for just one, one moment so that uh, these uh, kids can also exit. Just, just to I interrupt the Honorable John Bandy to recognize the presence in our public gallery and the speaker's gallery of students from the following institutions. Those from St. Joseph's Boys High School, Kitale, from Saboti Constituency, Transoya County. Those from Magoma Primary School, Mara Constituency, Tharakanidhi Constitu County. Students from uh, Yonda Kar Karuigi Secondary School, Bere South Constituency, Embu County. Those from St. Mary's Tabaka Primary School, South Mugirango Constituency, Kisi County. And those from Kibi Primary School, Juja Constituency, Kiabu County. They are all welcome to observe the proceedings of the National Assembly this afternoon. What about John Bandy, please? Sorry for the inter interruption. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity also to join my colleagues, both the leader of majority and the, uh, the deputy speaker, and of course yourself, Mr. Speaker, in condoling and sharing my grief and the grief indeed of all Kenyans uh, following the demise of these two great leaders. Mr. Speaker, Kenya is actually in mourning, and Mr. Speaker would say that I, I know that when leaders depart, people say, so many kind words about them, even those who probably don't deserve the kind words. But you'll agree with me that the leaders we are talking about today actually deserve the kind of uh, comments that we make about them. Mr. Speaker, my constituency, Suba South, which I represent in this house, my family and myself, we are both saddened by the demise of this. We are all saddened by the demise of these two great leaders. And I want to start by talking about Ken Okoth briefly. Ken Okoth joined parliament as a member of parliament on Orange Democratic Movement ticket, which I chair and, of course, I lead the minority in this house where Ken Okoth belong. But we'll agree that Ken Okoth was an individual or a member of parliament who cuts across and who was respected by members across the aisle. And Mr. Speaker, Ken Okoth, in Ken Okoth we have lost a team player. We have lost a diligent leader. We have lost a leader of great focus. And a leader who we all agree took his job so seriously that his constituents are really in mourning and mourning uh, because they have, uh, th this is a great loss to them. Mr. Speaker, and I accept the assignment that you have given me to chair this ad hoc committee. And I want to request the members because from uh, the vibes, from the informal discussion with the family, I hear that the family would want to give him a send-off uh, within one week. And therefore, I would request, uh, because the family has a meeting at 5.30, if we could possibly meet those members who are in this ad hoc committee at 4, 
Uh, we are yet to determine where, but I think I'll lie us with the clerk to know where. Mr. Speaker, on Joyce Laboso again, Mr. Speaker, this is a great leader for this country, and it is not an uh, exaggeration. This is a fact. Joyce Laboso joined Parliament, actually when I was already a member of Parliament, but the same year that I came to Parliament. And when she came, she came on Orange Democratic Movement ticket. Again, Mr. Speaker, Joyce was a very strong leader in terms of capacity to understand parliamentary procedures, and that is why we went ahead as a House to elect her as Deputy Speaker, to deputize you in a transition parliament, a parliament that was so unique, a parliament where we, are, we were going to test for the first time by cameral system. And Joyce Laboso, Mr. Speaker, again, was someone who would not hold a grudge. You could disagree with her. Sometimes I didn't agree with some of the decisions she made, but after leaving parliament, how, uh, the chamber, Mr. Speaker, we were all, always friends, always laughing. There's something that I want to note, that when we served in the 10th parliament, Joyce Laboso, myself, and others like Rachel Shabesh, Emilio Diambo, Ababu Namwamba, we formed on our own, without anybody's idea, what we called then ODM Reloaded. This was an organization within ODM of young parliamentarians who steered or tried to revamp the party that is ODM. And I would tell you that Joyce contributed a very strong, a very important role. Finally, Mr. Speaker, before Joyce moved to URP in 2012, I shared with her, because I used to pass a lot through her constituency while going to my constituency. And I actually told her that, Joyce, your people talk well about you. The only thing that they say is that if you remain in ODM, you would not win your seat again. And she had a really serious difficulty, I will tell you, those of us who are with her, whether to move from ODM to URP or not. But I advised her myself, as a friend, that I would want to see you again in parliament. I would suggest that you join the party, because politics is local. And that is what I think she did, based on my advice and others, I'm sure. And she joined URP, and she became a deputy speaker, finally became one of the first few female politicians, women, to become governors in this country. Mr. Speaker, it's a great loss to the people of Omet. It's a great loss to the people of Kenya. And of course, indeed, Mr. Speaker, to the people of Kuru, Mr. Speaker, where she was uh, married. But again, finally, it's also a great loss to the people of Kibra for losing Ken Okoth. We are all in mourning, Mr. Speaker. I want to pray that uh, may God rest their souls in eternal peace. Amen. I have uh, a special request by a former alumni of uh, Starry Boys Center, the Honorable Caleb Amisi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to join the, my colleagues and the entire nation in sending my message of condolence to the family uh, for the loss of Dr. Raboso, as well as our colleague, uh, Kibra, member of parliament. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I specifically request to um, read a, a tribute to Mweshimua Ken Okots, having been my very good cl uh, close friend, having shared the same school, and many other things. And I'll make it very brief. Mr. Speaker, it is difficult to pay tribute to any human being, but more difficult it is to eulogize a man who was the embodiment and the beacon of hope to many people in the country and beyond. My brother Ken was a selfless, versatile, and diligent man with a remarkable leadership style that has molded the aspirations of many young people and rekindled the flickering dreams in the informal settlements. Born and raised in the sprawling slum of Kibra, far from the corridors of power and opulence, the young Ken Okots had to contend with the studying at night in their tin-roofed house using Nyangile, a smoky paraffin tin lamp. For this effort, he had to pay a price for the rest of his life. He once asserted to a local journalist, my spectacles are not objects of prestige, but uh, emblems of paucity. I'll not be wearing them, had I grown up in an opulent background. 
In the midst of very difficult atmosphere that punctuated his earlier life, he chose the harder route even when opting for the shorter cuts was fashionable. Driven by the belief that one day he would redeem his family from the shackles of poverty that had made his life miserable at the tender age. He would later meet his hero, the right honorable Raila Odinga, who would rekindle the fire that was burning in him. A fire for something greater, something bigger, a vision to be human and a calling to be a brother's keeper. God's grace, commitment, and sheer hard work would see him perform in the National Primary School examination and proceed to Starry Boys Center, where his fire was kept burning by yet another unique figure and a tower in education, Dr. Griffin. The same fire that was lit and continued to burn even today in some of us. Instead of whining and blaming the society and his parents for the circumstances, Ken honored a dream that he knew will take an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort to turn it into reality. Perhaps this has laid the foundation of his quest for community service and voluntarism. It is here that his star shone again. He understood that a vision for humanity cannot be contained by lack of funds nor the place you come from. This is a man we pay tribute to today, a patriot, a leader, a son of the people of Kibra, a man who remains steadfast in principle and purpose, a role model that we try to emulate every day in the service of the people. He reached beyond partnership, partisanship, beyond our own selves to our very souls. We shared the creed that leadership was more than formulation of policies and stocking the shelves of development partners and the donors. It is a question of moral purpose, a moral rim that which only the truly great like Honken uh, was capable. His political instinct of truth, conviction, providence, and above all patriotism began long before he was thrust in the political limelight by the people of Kibra through the keys of Kibra Foundation that continued to support needy bright students. And when he came to the Agas house, he never forgot just who he was fighting for. He was solid with an over in conviction that he stood with even when the political ties were not in his favor. He brushed off the jibes and the jabs of his jealous critics and effortlessly disarmed them with his beaming smile and that easy homespun style, which he never changed. He brought a new assurance to Kenyans and the people he represented. He was not only Kibra Constituents Member of Parliament, important as it is, he was a nation's great leader. In a time of average men, he stood taller than anyone else. In a time of pol politicians, he proved himself a statesman and the tabled bills that would see the scourge of Kansas defeated. He dutifully demonstrated against injustices and he held a fair share of tear gas, which people like me who believe that things could and should happen differently in our land. Thanks to such sacrifices and selflessness, Kenya is back and on track towards becoming a model of democracy and prosperity of other African nations. His eloquence and diplomatic style of approaching affairs will forever remain unraveled. Of course, taught as a power of action, but he also strongly preached the power of ideas. The significance of reason and arguments, the need to study not only those who you agree with, but also those who you don't agree with. Mweshimiwa taught us not to give up even when things are even difficult. It is a hospital bed in France where I privately visited him with my family. He would radiate the same conviction through his desires to come home and continue doing what he did best, serving his country, serving the people of Kibra. And when things seem to be getting out of hand, his bravery and patriotism will not allow him to give up. Though his song has ended prematurely and his candle flickered, the melody will continue lingering on. Given the sweep of his life, the scope of his accomplishment, the adoration and the admiration that he so rightfully earned, it is fair to remember Kennedy Okoth as an icon, smiling and serene, detached from the tawdy affairs of lesser men. Imagine if we emulate such uh, just a fraction of what a man he was, how difficult, uh, different our country will be. To the people of Kibra, thank you for sharing Kennedy with us. With us, his struggle was your struggle, his triumph was your triumph, your dignity and your hope, your expression is in life. And now I join you in proclaiming that it is well with his soul. When peace like rivers attends my way, when sorrows like a sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul, it is well, Brothers, it is well. Sisters, it is well with my soul. Rest in peace, Brother Ken. Thank you, Speaker. Now, honor members, uh, to allow as many of you have a chance to eulogize uh, our two colleagues, I'll ask you to be as brief as possible. Otherwise, uh, it may be 
One minute. I'll start with the member for Laikipia North. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I also wish to join my colleagues in mourning our departed uh, colleagues and in condoling with the families of Honorable Ken Okoth and the Honorable Joyce Laboso. Speaker, I want to say that in the 11th Parliament, I was privileged to work under the Human Rights Caucus with the Honorable Ken Okoth. And uh, Speaker, I want to say he's one person I really admire his style of leadership. In August 2015, Ken Okoth and the Honorable Agustino Neto and the Honorable Shukran Gure came to my constituency to participate in a marathon that we conduct every year to raise funds to educate uh, underprivileged girls. The marathon is dubbed as the Amazing Maasai Marathon. When I was elected, uh, Mr. Speaker, the first place I brought my committee for an exchange tour was Kibra constituency. So I agree with everybody who have said that Ken Okoth was a great leader, and so was Joyce Laboso. Joyce Laboso, as a woman, is a mentor to most of us, a lot of us in this parliament, Mr. Speaker. And I know some members have brought bills in this parliament regarding cancer, Mr. Speaker. It is such a thing that should be declared as a national, uh, national disaster in this country. It is snatching the lives of very productive Kenyans. And Mr. Speaker, if you see such people of high profile losing their lives to cancer, you just wonder what happens to the common Wanaiji. So I join my colleagues in condoling and saying, may the good Lord rest their souls in eternal peace. Member for Madare. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I also want to, on behalf of Madare constituency, myself and my family, to join. Uh, today I saw a tweet, somebody said, oh my God, how can cancer come and kill cancer? Because, Mr. Speaker, this is a big problem. Losing also Governor, Governor Jesse Laboso, Mr. Speaker, I'm really privileged because she taught me communication skills at Teacherton University my first year. And uh, Mr. Speaker, when we met here in Parliament, she really mentored me in so many things, including her devices on how to mobilize uh, women, the youth in the constituencies. And Mr. Speaker, through her device, truly to be told, I was able, Mr. Speaker, to come back to this Parliament. And right now, I'm doing better than what uh, she told she taught me that time. So, so, Mr. Speaker, I really enjoy other Kenyans to condo these two great leaders. And, Mr. Speaker, I thank you. Member for Kibwezi East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to take the opportunity to join my friends and colleagues in passing my message of condolence myself on behalf of myself and my family on behalf of the people of Kibwezi East and on behalf of the people of Makweni to the Honorable uh, Member for Kibra and my boss in the 11th Parliament, Honorable Governor Dr. Laboso. Mr. Speaker, those who are in the 11th Parliament recall the good work of the Deputy Speaker, whom I had the chance to work under her, Mr. Speaker, as in your panel, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, what came in most of the public and members of parliament is how Honorable Joyce Laboso was forgiven. We may recall at a one particular time, Mr. Speaker, when the house was very hot, Mr. Speaker, we threw water on her when she was presiding the house. And Mr. Speaker, what Madam Laboso did say is that she forgave those who through water or poured water on her. Mr. Speaker, that was very forgiving of her, and we recall and remember her for that. Mr. Speaker, this disease called cancer is killing a lot of Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, most of the members would attest to me in the clip that is going round of a baby faith. Baby faith who comes from my constituency, Mr. Speaker, in addressing Madam, uh, the first 
uh, lady of this country. I'm very happy because today as we speak, today Madam um, uh, Baby Faith is in Nairobi Hospital, courtesy of First Lady Margaret Kenyatta uh, because of cancer. Mr. Speaker, I also want to pass my message of to the family, relatives, and friends of Honorable Okoth, uh, the Member of Parliament for Kibra. Mr. Speaker, I have served with member for... Me member, member for Tinderet, but before you, you give your condolences, allow me to recognize the presence of more students from, and pupils from the following institutions in the Speaker's Gallery, Moy Kapcherob, Secondary School, Marakwet West Constituency, Marakwet County. Kenya Muslim Academy from Madare Constituency, Nairobi County. ABC Mongo Secondary School, Mwingi Central, Kitui County. Those from Lake Breeze Academy, Budalangi Constituency, Busia County. Kimunai Primary School, Marakwet West Constituency, Marakwet County. Nyonjia Primary School, Gil. Ken Okoth and Dr. Joyce Laboso, our governor. Mr. Speaker, I want to say I was privileged to serve with Honorable Koth as a member of education committee in the last parliament, that's the 11th parliament, where together, Mr. Speaker, uh, Ken Koth displayed his skills, his knowledge, and his understanding of education matters through debates, through various motions, and even, Mr. Speaker, through a number of bills that he brought to this house. Ken Okoth, I want to say, was a very astute leader, a very articulate person in matters education. In fact, in last parliament, when we went on a trip to the US, on benchmarking trip, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell this house, it is in that particular trip where we were able to have ideas on having money to follow the children or to follow the child, on what we call today the NEMIS, or the Minister of Education has. I also want to say that on Joyce Laboso was our deputy speaker, where she served with a lot of dedication, with a lot of uh, humility, and actually through her, this house gained a lot of knowledge in terms of parliamentary practices, even in the European Parliament and even uh, African Pacific region. So, Mr. Speaker, on my own behalf and on, my, on the people of Tinderet and Nandi County at large, we convey our condolences to the two families of Honorable Koth and Dr. Joyce Laboso. Toleni Sana. Member for Borabu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you for giving me this chance also to send my personal and uh, the condolences from the people of Borabu for the demise of our colleague, late, of our late colleagues, the Honorable Ken Koth and uh, the Honorable, the late speak, uh, the Honorable Dr. Joyce Laboso, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, pass, I worked, the, the two, Mr. Speaker, my personal friends, we were together in the, the, this, this house, Mr. Speaker, in the last parliament, and also with Ken in this parliament, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as a house, we have lost very great leaders, Mr. Speaker, as a country, and it's, it's my wish, Mr. Speaker, as some of the leaders have said, that Mr. Speaker now cancer, it's becoming a menace in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's, so, it's important, Mr. Speaker, that we address this issue as a nation. We address this issue, as, Mr. Speaker, as a, 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 as, as a, as a national assembly, Mr. Speaker, so that money is set aside, Mr. Speaker, so that we, are, we save lives that are lost on a daily basis from this uh, uh, deadly disease, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on behalf, again, on behalf of the people of Borabo and uh, my family, Mr. Speaker, I send my condolences to the people of Bomet, so take and uh, the people of Kibra, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Danita Gatti. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to send my condolences. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of persons with disabilities, Honorable Speaker, to the family of uh, Honorable Ken Okoth, my friend, and member of my party, and uh, the late Dr. Joyce Laboso, who was Honorable Speaker, a Deputy Speaker in the last Parliament. Honorable Speaker, I knew Honorable Ken Okoth from the NGO sector before we came into Parliament, and Honorable Speaker, I would say that uh, Honorable Ken Okoth 
is basically a friendly person. And Honorable Speaker, it is so sad that at this time in the history of this 12th par Parliament, Honorable Speaker, we have two bodies of our members, Honorable Speaker, lying in the mortuary right now because of cancer. Honorable Speaker, I want to also say that Honorable Laboso was our friend in this house, Honorable Speaker. And for us, Honorable Speaker, by her becoming the first ever woman uh, Deputy Speaker, really set and uh, challenged uh, the ceiling for women and girls in this country, Honorable Speaker. On behalf of myself, Honorable Speaker, and on behalf of persons with disabilities that I present, Honorable Speaker, from Migori to Trukana, Honorable Speaker, I send my condolences. And Honorable Speaker, this vice, this national disaster, Honorable Speaker, that is cancer. It's high time, Honorable Speaker, that we spoke as members of parliament and we sat down openly to discuss cancer, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we cannot continue to bury our heads in the sand. Honorable Speaker, we need to seriously look at the issue of health care and the issue of cancer in this country to save our people, Honorable Speaker, who are spending a lot of money in the treatment of cancer, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. Member for Kimini. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my family, the people of Kimini and the great count of Transoya, we pass a message of condolence to the two families for the late Honorable, for the late Dr. Joyce Laboso and uh, Ken, who was the MP for Kibra. Mr. Speaker, I worked with both leaders in the last parliament, and they had something in common, Mr. Speaker. Both of them, they were humble, Mr. Speaker. They were focused and committed to their work. It's my prayer to the Almighty God to give their families strength and comfort at this particular difficult time, and also to request the government, Mr. Speaker, to move with speed to declare cancer as a national disaster so that we can put a legislative proposal in place, Mr. Speaker, so we can move and try to see how we are going to manage this uh, menace of, of, uh, of cancer. I thank you. Member for Endebes. Member for Endebes. It's gone. Member for Mosop. Asante sana, Bwana Speaker. Kwa kunipa nafasi hii, kwa niaba ya wananchi ambao nawakilisha Mosop, na nandi kwa jumla, kupeana risala sa rambi rambi, kwa wabu mbunge Keno Koth na vile vile gavana wetu daktari Laboso Bwana speaker wiki moja hivi tulipata nafasi kuwazuru wao wakiwa hospitalini hapa Nairobi mimi na mheshimiwa Serem na mheshimiwa Keter tulipata mheshimiwa Okoth na mke wake wakiwa hospitalini na tulijumuika pamoja tukiona hali ambayo yeye mwenyewe alikuwa akipitia kwa uchungu wote kupitia ugonjwa huu wa saratani. Baada hapo tukapata nafasi ya kumweza kumuona gavana ambaye ametuacha daktari Laboso na tukaona kwamba ugonjwa huu pia ulikuwa unamchukua kwa hali ambao sisi wote tulishtuka kuona kwamba yeye mwenyewe alikuwa na hari na nia ya kupata madawa na kupona ili arudi kufanya kazi yake ya ukavana kule katika kaunti yake ya Bomet lakini ya Mungu ni mengi tumewapoteza hao wote lakini ni jambo la dharura sisi wote kama viongozi na serikali tuchukulie jambo hili la saratani kuwa ni janga la kitaifa na tuweke pesa na tuweke mikakati na kutafuta mbinu na maarifa ambao tunaweza kusaidia watu wetu kwa hayo bwana speaker natoa rambi rambi zangu zote kwa niaba yangu mimi mwenyewe familia yangu na wananchi wote ambao mimi nawakilisha kule Mosop kwamba poleni na ni poleni sana Honorable members I think at some point I have to bring this to a close Ona, you know I know how all of us feel about uh, our two departed uh, good friends so and it, it would, if it were possible I'm sure every one of us would have something to say, but just not humanly possible. 
because even with the time available, it, it would have to, to extend the sitting to around uh, 9 p.m. if everyone was to, to have to, to say something. So, but because we also have uh, the condolence books that have been uh, brought to us, we will just accept that uh, what has been said is sufficiently representative so that I can hear only two more. And uh, let me begin with an elder, the member for SEME. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of SEME, and on behalf of myself and my family, may I also pass my deep condolences to the two leaders that have the... And then we can pass the message to all our voters. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Wasingishu County. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me the opportunity to join, join my colleagues in passing my condolences to the families of Honorable Ken Okoth, and of that of uh, Governor Dr. Joyce Laboso and the entire people of Kibra and those of, uh, of uh, the Bomet County. Um, we, rem we reach out to the families and tell them that they were blessed to have a phenomenal woman, an uh, uh, excellent professional and an ex excellent politician. For Ken Okoth, I remember him as a person who was committed to human rights for all through his programs on sustainable development goals, which he had already put in place in Kibra uh, constituency. Also, um, I would like to be able uh, to remember both of them in also their, their talk and their, 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 the cases that they put before us who met them and said we must do something about cancer. And I hope that this country may be able to focus on that. If we were able to kick out smallpox, or polio and measles, we should be able to kick out cancer. I call upon this house to ensure that we begin to look at food safety issues and early screening programs at a primary health level so that we are able to reach everyone. Today, I look at the story of Ken Okoth and that of Joyce Laboso and others who have fallen before them to this uh, scourge of cancer, that they are the voices for those in the countryside who are unable to even get screening. We hope that they can become the voices of those because those of us who have insurance are fine because you have a choice to have the screening or not. But there are those people who go to their local dispensaries and are misdiagnosed because there isn't a primary caregiver who even understands the symptoms of cancer. We do hope. Member for Jomfu, finally. Uh, asante sana mwishima speaker kwa kunipatia fursa hii na mimi pia kuungana na wenzangu kwa niaba yangu na kwa niaba ya familia yangu na wananchi wangu wote wa Jomvu tunatoa rambi rambi zetu kwa wananchi wa Kibra na vile vile katika county ya Bomet kwa kumpoteza mheshimiwa Lois Laboso Mheshimiwa speaker nataka kuzungumza leo juu ya mheshimiwa Kenokoth ambaye alikuwa ni mtu mzuri sana mheshimiwa speaker mimi mwenyewe binafsi niliweza kufanya kazi na yeye katika bunge la moja. na katika sehemu ya kwangu kule Jomvu mheshimiwa speaker Ken Okoth marehemu aliweza kuja kufungua madarasa katika sehemu ya Bangladesh ambayo ni mikindani kwa hivyo alikuwa rafiki mzuri na leo mheshimiwa speaker nataka kuzungumza kusema nikiwa mwanakamati wa bajeti Ni miezi miwili iliyopita wakati tulitumwa kufanya mambo ya public participation na mheshimiwa mimi pamoja na mheshimiwa Nyamita tulitumwa kule Bomet na Bomet tukasimama pale na wakati huo tulimpata marehemu la boso akiwa ameenda hospitali tuliomba Mungu tukijua pengine ataweza kupata uhai lakini nasema ni kazi ya Mungu ambayo haina makosa kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker kwa niaba yangu ya familia yangu na kwa niaba ya wananchi wa Jomvu Natoa rambi rambi zetu sana kwa wananchi wa Bomet na vile vile Kibra. Na nasema serikali ya Kenya iweze kutangaza hii mambo ya saratani kwa janga la kitaifa. Na vile vile kuwa na hospitali za cancer screening katika kila county katika Kenya hii, county ya 47 zote zote zinaweza kufanya matibabu ya mambo ya kansa. Kwa hayo nataka kuchukua fursa hii mheshimiwa speaker na mimi kushukuru kwa kunipatia nafasi hii kutoa rambi rambi zangu kwa ndugu zetu ambao wametuacha asante na Mwenyezi Mungu atubariki finally very very final 
member for Kitutu Church and North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me a chance to to mourn my good friends who have made their final destination in this country. Mr. Speaker, Ken Okoth was an upcoming leader in this country. And the way he has suffered under that cancer for the last two or three years, but he has been able to persevere and he has been able to serve his people. Honorable Her Excellency Raboso, she comes from, she's a neighbor to where I come from. She has performed so well, so much so, that in a period of ten, less than 10 years, she was able to perform so well that she was elected by a landslide majority to be a governor of Bomet. It's unfortunate that she had, got, she, had got, she had had to depart. But what we should do, we should task the Committee on Health to come up with a bill so that we can establish in this country cancer centers in every region. So there are people who are back at home who don't have insurance covers can be actually be tested early in, uh, early in the infection and maybe can be treated. We also should encourage our people not to give up, but to seek uh, treatment. Maybe God will allow them to be, to be living on. To those of you remarks, I beg to mourn my colleagues. General, one of our members, I think, like I said, um, I know if it were possible, every one of us would really have something to say about our two colleagues who have uh, left us. But suffice that, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's agree that those that have spoken had the chance to speak, have spoken on, the, on a behalf of all, all of us. And that indeed, even as we talk about policy, at the national government, uh, as a national government function within health, the health sector, we must address not just the uh, what you have suggested as centers, but also what the Honorable Gladys Shulay referred to as the infrastructure necessary to ensure that early screening is, not, is done properly, carefully, professionally, and qualified personnel. Because we still know that there exists the possibilities of misdiagnosis. So indeed, personnel and in nether, all the necessary infrastructure. Because as you have all pointed out, yes, you may be in a position to, to go for screening, but how about the people you represent? Many of whom may not uh, afford uh, even that basic uh, screening. So let's just pray that uh, the Almighty God rests their souls in eternal peace. Thank you very much, honorable members. We will uh, stop at that point. But there are organizations, there are plans, burial committees for our two colleagues, and information will be coming as we move on into the week. I'm aware about preliminary arrangements which are being made, but you will be informed maybe by tomorrow or the day after. Thank you very much. Thank you.